You get the bag and fumble it. I get the bag and flip it and tumble it. What is happening, people? It is the Canon Culture Podcast, the premier entertainment commentary podcast. Uh, this is your host, Just J. Sama. I'm here with producer Plank. Plank, have you uh, you seen this new this new hero in Overwatch, man? You know, tanks are kind of going crazy right now. I think I heard a lot of things about Roadhog being the the best tank in the game right now. Really? Oh, damn. Yeah. Whew, that's not good. Roadhog, Winston, Zarya. Everybody but Reinhardt. Reinhardt never getting touched. <sighs> yeah. Well, never. I mean, Shattered is 200 damage, so. Oh, that's not enough. That's a kill, buddy. That's what are you talking enough. about? That's not enough. Not enough is crazy. Not enough for for the for a character that nobody plays. Yeah, no, nah, not enough. Not nah, plenty of people play Reinhardt. Nah, nah, nah. You right. I, I might have to jump one, back on the game. One right, bro. He started growling in the mic when he was going. <laughs> That shit was hilarious. <laughs> Ain't no way, bro. <laughs> nah, he unironically did that. <laughs> I think I did that maybe crazy, once or twice. Man. I won't even lie. He he was going crazy. Yeah, no, nah, I'm not gonna lie. I may have done that once or twice, man. I may have done that. Once did or the twice. pop smoke growl? You're a sick man. <laughs> oh, <nah>. <laughs> <laughs> You're a sick man. <laughs> so, man, how was your holiday? How was it? How did that it was go? Good. I had a. I slept through most of it. So. Oh really? They let you sleep? Yeah. I would have thought you would have been up and cleaning the house and shit, man. I did that the uh, before the day before Thanksgiving. Oh, I was okay. like, I was cleaning and shit, open up. All right, for sure, for sure. Dad had you at the grill, huh? No, no, no. Who was cooking Absolutely this year? Not. Uh, my my mom and dad cook. Oh. Okay. My dad was doing the turkey, like he does the turkey and shit. My mom does the uh, the other shit. Okay. All right. For sure. You guys usually keep what, the fam family visitation pretty small. Like the circle's pretty. Uh, a f there's like a few. Okay. Uh, like two or three. Like my cousin, grandmother, hmm. uh, cousin's girl, or whoever he's bringing. Ah. Okay. Okay. You say that. And like... then the family of four. Oh, okay. For sure. For sure. I was gonna say you say that like he he bringing a different girl every year. He has actually. Hey, <laughs> <Ain't> no way. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta no, trade in the old model for a new one. I guess I don't. I don't know. Damn, that brother! Wow. Hey man, I'm gonna let him do his thing. That's but crazy. he didn't come over this year. It was just uh, it was uh, just me and my family and my grandma. Or the, ah, okay. Everybody's living in my house. Ah, okay, for sure, for sure. Yeah, man, I didn't, I didn't do jack shit this year. Um, I actually, funny enough, on Thanksgiving Day, I lost my wallet. Um. <laughs> Because, yeah, it was real bad, man. Um, so I had been taking care of uh, my boss's dog. Um, well, I guess it used to be my dog, but you know, long story about that. Um, the cat was cool. I got I got to meet the cat. That was that was cool. Um, fucking some cats are adorable, man. Like ever since I became a cat person, like it was just like I love all cats, bro. I just couldn't I just couldn't resist. I couldn't resist, you know um so that was cool i spent mm. thanksgiving uh, with the home girl and uh two of our two of our other, uh, other homies and stuff and everybody cooked and stuff and i was supposed to supply the drinks but i had lost my wallet that morning and bro when i tell you like everything was in my wallet my id my phone uh like uh like the card i have for it like for the uh you know the business card thing yep. like yeah, yeah i had that in there um my all of my credit cards my triple a card my fucking costco card bro like hey. and i had like 40 dollars in cash man that was that was devastating and having to realize that i can't take an uber anywhere made my life so fucking difficult bro like i ended up having to get on on bus after bus after bus hoping that they weren't charging because it was thanksgiving and only some of them were like oh yeah the machine's not working and the other one was like oh no like we're letting people on for free like so i had to take like four or five buses to get to her place right yeah and uh man i was i was real nervous about getting there because i started seeing cops at train stations and i'm like oh my god please don't let this please don't let this be the day like imagine getting a fucking transit ticket on thanksgiving bro like this thanks for giving me nothing like you know what i mean so uh didn't want to fuck around there but anyway so went over went over to her place it was a great time i got super lit uh 
I was fucked up, bro. Like, I mean, we had the, um, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, anytime I go over to her house, I'm just getting fucked up. Like, I'm always getting drunk over there. Like, I'm. Jesus. And you didn't even bring anything. No, nah, I didn't even bring anything. Yeah, <laughs> I just showed that's up. That's actually disrespectful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just showed up, and then I, you know, what's funny. I drank majority of the liquor. I ate majority of the Damn. food. <laughs> majority of Damn. the dessert. <laughs> Motherfucker, what didn't you do, <laughs> bro? I just, I, I did the dishes. Every time I go over there, oh, okay. I always, I always do the dishes. Like. It, okay. yeah yeah even when i do show up with stuff like i always like because you know her her mom is there all the time you know what i mean and like it, she lives with her mom and who better to set a good example of what men should do you know so when i go over there i start cooking you know i start doing oh, the dishes yeah. i was like you know every year like her mom thinks it's funny and stuff like that i'd be like why are there women in my kitchen right now like what's going oh, on God. in here <laughs> like <laughs> every year every year um uh, and then sometimes they'll do like dinner parties and stuff and uh i'll tell her i was like oh yeah you know i'm actually just gonna instacart you know the ingredients and stuff i use so when i go over there and i start cooking i'm like please no no women in my kitchen right now like i don't need y'all touching nothing and they just think it's like hee hee ha ha funny funny and i'd be like no i i need both of you to admit that men are better in the kitchen like i i need both oh of my you. God. men belong in the kitchen and like they think it's funny but i'm like dead serious i'm like please get, get out of the way like <laughs> y'all gotta move <laughs> so that was pretty cool. Uh, my home, my uh, my homie. Uh, what do I call him? Uh, I don't want to give nobody's name away. Anyway, so my homie made mashed potatoes for the first time, and uh, nice. <laughs> he made his very. This is the first time I ever heard him make a black joke, and I could tell he was uncomfortable. He goes, he goes, Jay, come here. I need you to try these mashed potatoes. I was like, Oh, why, man? Did you put enough butter or whatever? He's like, Listen, man. I, I know you know what good mashed potatoes taste like. I said what do you mean by that he goes don't don't fucking play with me <laughs> just, just just try these goddamn mashed potatoes tell me if they taste like home i said like home what you mean like who's home. like home like 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 my home he's just like no man like i do they taste familiar to you i said whatever you put in there is not gonna taste familiar to me my man like no matter what you put in there and he was just very hesitant about like his mashed potatoes he, he almost seemed very insecure about it man i tried those mashed potatoes they were great fantastic oh absolutely Ooh. fantastic good, yeah. good ending yeah 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 i made Actually, it, it was almost I, I made it seem like they were disgusting though i said hey bro what the fuck did you put in this and he goes why what, what is it missing do i need salt pepper like do i need to add extra onions this that and the other day i was like let me try one more <laughs> let me try one more scoop that shit was bomb man that shit was absolutely bomb not the mashed potatoes i would have made but he didn't add enough butter um so it was you know, it was just lacking so you fucking is like you still grilling this shit no 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 it was just lacking in the creaminess you know what i'm saying like you know when you when you scoop good mashed potatoes and they got that fluff to it like that like he yeah. didn't have enough butter and it, it they were like a little thickier so that, that whoa they were they were a little chunkier that's what i'm yeah. saying like yeah yeah they were a little chunkier they weren't as smooth as like you know like clouds like when i when you scoop it up i need to just see the you know i gotta hear a, a draft a little bit you know what i'm saying mm. so um anyway i've always hated thanksgiving food anyway like my my least favorite part is stuffing and turkey just because i've never gone oh. over to anybody's house where they had good good stuffing and good turkey except for my ex-girlfriends last year um and even then it was just like you know her mom her mom make a pretty good stuffing but the turkey was kind of mid the ham was fire though the ham was her her my ex-girlfriend's like mother's ham yo that sounds crazy uh her the yeah yeah the her yams delicious um mm, the I ham bet. was also fire like that's probably like in my entire life those are probably that's probably the best ham i've ever had so you know i was thinking yeah. about just pulling up you know just being like hey let me get up on some future type shit it's like, oh, okay. Let me let me just get a plate. You know, I'm just I'm just here for a little bit. I'm just here for your moms. That's all. I'm not here to see you. Mm, like, <laughs> oh so, uh, but yeah, man. Thanksgiving was Thanksgiving was chill. Uh, came back to the crib, super super fucked up. Um, my home girl is now uh, getting to a place where she's like, oh, so you're not gonna invite me over? And stuff is getting weird. But you know, we're gonna talk about that on the Patreon this week. Um, mm. yeah, man. And of course, you know me, I'm always consuming podcast after podcast after podcast, man. Um, trying to learn what the industry is doing this week. I actually discovered a new podcast. Um, oh, nice. do you know who, uh, I'm sure you do. Cause as soon as I recite her, 
uh, her IMDb, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, of course I know who the fuck that is. Um, are you familiar with the work of uh, Christy Carlson Romano? Uh, hold on. Not you Googling I'm, it. I'm shit, I'm shit with names. Okay. You ever watch the show Even Steven? Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You ever watch uh, another another show? It's actually an animated show. It's called uh, Kim Possible. Oh, uh, yeah, I know who this person is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so she has a podcast with uh, Will Friedel, who is Ron Stoppable. And, funny enough, oh. he actually does the voice of Terry McGinnis from uh, Batman Beyond. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they have a podcast called I Hear Voices, and uh, they did a tribute for Kevin Conroy last week. Um, that was beautiful, man. That was absolutely beautiful. And they replayed his interview that they did uh with him i believe it was like last year um and man the the nuggets that i i'm, I'm actually very upset now that like i'm fully going to it, like embrace being a professional voice actor not just a half-ass one um i'm really upset yeah. i never got a chance to meet kevin conroy man um mm. because you know the the information that he drops on there is just is just crazy as far as like voice acting um, of course he does give like, you know, some like life nuggets here and there about like, you know, believe in yourself, blah, 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 you know, stuff like that, that, you know, yeah. we hear all the time. Um, but yeah, man, to see, to see this man have a conversation with two of what I would believe are very iconic characters, both, you know, Will and Christy. Um, and they were explaining a lot of like business, um, behind the scenes stuff. And I, I, I got to a point where I've been listening to their podcast and her personal podcast. I can't remember what the name of it is. Hold on. I, I might have to find it. So she has a um, one where she's just either talking like uh, about her experiences in the industry or, uh, you know, the experiences that she has had with other actors and stuff like that. Um, she's trying to get Shia LaBeouf on an episode so that way they can have like a even steven's reunion type of thing on our podcast mm. um and so she had uh alexa i forget her last name i think it's like nichols or nicholson or something like that uh her podcast is called vulnerable right and mm. it's she's interviewing other disney stars other nickelodeon stars and stuff like that and i actually wanted to get super jet on today's episode he wasn't responding so shout out to him um <laughs> that apparently there was a ton of drama when it came to like zoe 101 uh victorious i carly like apparently all of those shows were Ooh. cat fights almost every day like i feel like super j would know that though. yeah 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 um actually there was some information that i presented to him that uh dan schneider actually did uh well i'm gonna say allegedly i'm gonna say allegedly sexually assaulted multiple girls on zoe 101 and iCarly. so and um one of them alexa she actually talks about her abuse that she suffered from dan specifically and not just that not just dan but apparently jamie lynn and britney spears so it's very very interesting podcast um i didn't have any clips prepared because i just wanted to like introduce it this week <laughs> and so yeah. uh you know hopefully if we get any questions or comments down in the comment section for today's episode maybe we'll include a clip or of something next week um i'll find something juicy but i was watching one episode where um damn what was dude's name i i always forget he's one of my favorites <laughs> damn. um let me see uh tom kenny tom kenny was on an episode Ooh. and they had him doing like 19 different fucking voices right and he was like yeah you know everything is really just a rendition of spongebob at a certain point and i was like what he, he did mickey mouse and he did donald duck and he did like a ton of iconic characters but they all still had like a reminiscence of like spongebob in his voice so i was just like yeah jesus christ like thomas thomas crazy um which leads me to my next thing i wanted to talk about was now that i've started uh steve bloom's uh voice acting class the first person that he got to interview uh like on it was basically like a live zoom call it was me and like seven other people right um yep. including him and tom kenny popped in 
and they were answering questions and stuff like that. And bro, I was so starstruck in a, in a fucking Zoom call. Now, first of all, Just Jay Sama X, you know, talking to Spike Spiegel is, is already a crazy fucking title. So, yep. so, you know, I had to cut the OBS on. <laughs> Ooh. I, I cut the OBS on, man. And you know what? Uh, Steve did not like that. <laughs> I, I asked, I was like, hey, do you think I could, you know, record this from my YouTube channel and like all this other stuff? He did not like that. And then he also said that if I find out that you put any of this information, you know, that I, like that I don't give you consent to use, I not only will kick you out of the class, but I will fucking sue you. And I was like, oh, my God. Uh, OK. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough, my man. So, you know, d safe to say that the interview with Just Jay Sama, Tom Kenny <laughs> and Steve Bloom will not be airing. <laughs> so that will not be airing anytime soon. <laughs> but um, yeah, man, I, that was really cool. Uh, really, really dope experience. I have learned a lot in the last week. Um, and I'm going to try and like regurgitate a lot of that information going forward at least with like working industry stuff that i do learn um so this week has been like meditation breath control stuff like that um cold reading was one that we really really focused on was um just being able to pick up anything and start reading it and i was like oh steve i i do that all the time i i read everything i pick up a box of anything and he's like oh okay um and he had me like break down a couple of characters and stuff like that um and he was like, yeah, I, I, your homework for this week is we're going to focus on a few of these specific characters and your renditions of them. Um, so I actually got uh, three characters. So one is Joker, which is very, very interesting how I got that. The other one is uh, Dr. Uh, uh, Doofenshmirtz. So he's he's <laughs> next. Yeah, I, I absolutely I don't know what the fuck I'm going to do that. And then the last one I picked was obviously Yuzui Tengen uh from demon slayer so uh those are the three characters that i have to work on voices for and that's due on thursday yeah i did have a fourth one but I, i'm deciding not to do it and it was homer simpson and i'm just like i am yeah there's there's no there's no way that's happening so um but we'll see man i'm i'm very excited it's been a dope class it's you know after the first you know two lessons basically I'm like, damn, all right, book me, man. I'm, re I'm ready to go get some work somewhere. Shit. Ready to get some video game stuff done. So, mm. yeah, we'll see. Uh, you feel that confident already? Um, Honestly, yeah. I mean, the only credit I have specifically, like, when it comes to, you know, professional voice acting is Lego Batman 3. Like, and I did s seven different characters, seven different background characters yeah. and voice matching for uh, Black Beetle. And that was it so i didn't even know you did that that's very nice yeah it's, it's the only it's really the only professional credit i have compared to and then like a few like uh student thesis films and stuff like that but other than that i mean you know I'm just, i don't even have an imdb page set up yet so really it can't be that good right yeah well i so. mean you did something um yeah you know i mean it, it really is not that hard like you just go like at the time it was just go on craigslist and find you know people looking for craigslist and fiverr were two really big um i guess platforms that i used to be able to find my first voiceover gigs um and then backstage was when uh which is backstage.com uh not back page i don't want anybody getting yeah, yeah 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 yeah. so the one for voice acting. yeah yeah yeah. the one for voice acting and uh so backstage actually does you know like commercials and like real big time like acting stuff and uh stand-in work uh so you can actually audition on the website and stuff like that so i had a uh i had my profile set up with like the different uh you know versions of i actually did uh I talked about this before and I still have the video for it too. I did, you know, the, the, uh, song in the little mermaid, a part of your world. Uh, pretend you do. Specific. Yeah. Yeah. Pretend you okay, do. I know yeah, you're not yeah, a Disney guy. 100%. Yeah. So I did that song, but in a re rendition of the Joker. So, uh, Ooh. it's basically, uh, I want to be where the people are. I want to see them dancing, walking around on those. What do they call? oh feet and then it's uh damn i i wish i had the video up i don't have the lyrics like hold on, hold on, hold on. let me see let me see let me pull it up 
I don't want to do it on the podcast because it's just like that's free. You know what I mean? Like I can't I can't be given I can't be given like free you know voice acting. No over, freebies. Yeah, no freebies. Not even on my own show. Absolutely not. So uh, the opening line is uh, look at it. Look at this stuff. Isn't it neat? Wouldn't you think my collection's complete? Like as soon as I read that, like the first time, I was like, damn, like that's Joker. Like for sure, mm. absolutely. Like what is Joker has his own collection of just like bombs gadgets gizmos aplenty you know i got who's it's and what's it's galore you want thingamabobs i have 20 <laughs> like you know what i'm saying so that just felt like joker to me so uh i did that and that was the one that that booked me lego batman so you oh, know oh, wow yeah 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 and so now i think once for me anyway once i had gotten a real professional like voiceover gig, it was no longer a hobby. It was no longer a a thing where it's just like, oh, I'm just making voices, you know, in my room and making YouTube videos and doing like little sketches and skits and stuff. I had gone in, in like a course of 24 hours of like establishing my profile, making everything in a in a span of 24 to 48 hours. I not only had multiple shows that I was, you know, getting paid for. I mean, it was only like a couple hundred bucks here and there. But then I got a $2,000 gig for an actual video game that I'm going to play. So it's like, okay, holy shit. Like, it, this was also a scenario where I could have done this from home. But if it was one where it's like, hey, we want you to come into the recording studio. That's a that's a chance to meet Nolan North because he was Superman on that project. It's a chance to meet Kevin Conroy. It was a chance to meet Troy Baker. Like, all of these greats were part of this game. And at any point, if you know, if it wasn't for fucking COVID and all this other shit, you know, it, it would have been one of those things where like I would have gotten to meet my idols, you know. So I don't know, mm. man. It's, it's it's so surreal to see that your dream is tangible and like you could touch it, like like you just get, you know what I mean, like a little bit on on your hands. And so mm. uh, I thought that was dope, man. And you know, I've I've really enjoyed this class, even though I've only had you know two two classes of it so you know I'm, I'm interested to see where it goes it's so surreal because i no longer i i even put this on instagram the other day i was like i was having an out of body experience or like uh, imposter syndrome really and i felt like i was just pretending to be somebody else because i woke up the other day and i was just like what the fuck is going on in my life right now like i i for the life of me couldn't tell where i was in my like journey of like how close am i to the to the pinnacle of my career or uh is is my age an issue right now or you know i was just having all these like weird doubts and thoughts so mm. to be able to be like oh no like here it's not really like a gauge or a marker of your progress as far as like where you are in your career it was really just like here's a point of validation and i just wasn't feeling like myself you know, I didn't yeah. I, I, I didn't feel like I was me anymore. And I was real confused by it because I don't know if it was a good thing or a bad thing. And so even now, I'm like still trying to figure that out because the more I've been focusing on my career and stuff, I've noticed I, I was even talking about this on stream the other day. The more I am focusing on my career and stuff like that, the more distractions suddenly come out of nowhere. Suddenly, um, you know, people who didn't want to have anything to do with me are, are texting me, oh, hey, happy Thanksgiving. Like, bitch, I ain't talked to you in like five years. <laughs> Why the fuck do you still have my number? Who is this? Like, mm. fuck out of here. I got old homies who are coming out of nowhere. Hey, man, listen, I, I don't know if you are free in December, but we're filming this thing and we would love for you to come and be a part of the project. I know what that means. I mean, that means you want me to come and work for free. That means you want me to come in and organize your shit because you don't know what you're doing. Like I've worked with this guy before. I don't, <laughs> I'm good, bro. Like there's a reason why we stopped talking. There's a reason why we stopped working together. Like you're, you're disorganized and I don't want to fuck with you. Like it just, it is what it is. So Damn, shots already. Oh yeah. Yeah. Big time, bro. He knows who the fuck he is. Like, uh, oh unlike God. some of my homies, some of my homies are disorganized. Like, first of all, if it doesn't apply, let it fly. Some of my homies are absolutely disorganized, but I love them to death. Like, uh, specifically my homie Daryl, right? Like he and I have known each other for fuck 25 26 years yeah I met, I met him when i was six and we've been we've been great friends ever since man and so for him he could be disorganized to hell and i can yell and scream at him and all this other stuff but you know i would gladly do a project with him but this other guy nah 
he don't got the rapport with me like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. and not only that, every time I, I show up to a shoot of his, it's it's never a professional environment. Uh, he never has, uh, he never takes care of his actors, never takes care of his producers. He's doing rewrites the day of. And it's like, all right, bro, I get, if you want to do rewrites the day of, sure, 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 sure. Let's make some tweaks here and there. But don't expect people to like suddenly have all of this stuff memorized that you just changed today. Like, I can understand if you're a big time producer or a big time director and you know you're working with a-list talent that are actually you know uh they have the experience to do these things but but you don't that you're not working with those people you're literally working with your friends that you know, one of them's an accountant the other one she works at a gym uh this this other one she's a registered nurse like bro you don't have actors here like these aren't this isn't what these people do like they're just mm. they're only here to support you as your friends and even they're getting kind of like fed and pissed off with you because you don't know what the fuck you're doing like you just haven't had enough experience so when you bring me on board who has 10 years of experience in and out of multiple versions uh, of the entertainment industry i can tell you how to go from okay so we're in pre-production right now you should probably tell your staff this you should probably tell your actors this that and the other thing these are how you do reworks this is how you do edits this is how you do reshoots um and make sure you have the sunset right make sure you understand what the weather is like all of these things are prep that you have to do before going into shooting and stuff even when i was like 19 and i got my internship with freddie wong and i i went on my first on-site assignment with him and we were in downtown la he cut the shoot in half because he was like oh yeah we're losing sunlight and we might as well just try again in two weeks because we can only spend you know an hour or two in this level of sunlight otherwise it's useless because it's not going to match the continuity of the rest of the video that we're making so you mm. know, yeah i i say all this you know ranty shit to really be like damn like all all i had to do was really like sit and focus on the shit that not even focus just lean a little bit more towards the shit that i was already doing and i i feel pretty good about it um i can only imagine what it's like for people to want to chase their dreams and have a significant other and children uh that's mad difficult like i would if i was not able to chase my dreams i would go crazy like if i had a kid right now and i couldn't do an audition or if i had uh, a girlfriend and a kid and had to like pay for all of these things and make sure my kids are taken care of before i go and record today's podcast i would i would lose my fucking mind i absolutely would <laughs> Mm. so it's a it's a new fear of mine to have kids it's a new fear of mine to to get into a relationship with somebody that's that actually needs my attention <laughs> so mm. i mean maybe i think it's just where you're at right like you want to you want to do so many things that it's just you don't have enough time to, to just to take care of the home i guess right you need to be free per se yeah and you know the amount like i was saying before the amount of things that kind of come out of nowhere are different distractions and stuff like that uh just you know just to kind of shit on some people and and say an example um somebody that did not fuck with me that was just like hey i don't think we should hang out like this anymore i don't think we should mess around this that and the other thing all of a sudden i start getting busy you know my my name is popping up a little bit more on their twitter feed all of a sudden they want to be like, hey, you want to you want to hang out? Like, this is the first time this person has officially asked me on a date. She was like, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. She said, hey, why don't you know? I understand you lost your wallet and all this other stuff. This was literally yesterday. Hey, do you want to go on a date? I said, are you asking me on a date right now? Like, yo, what's what's it? She's like, no, 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 no. I mean, like, you know, maybe we should go on a on a you know a dinner outing or something like that. I was like, no, say what you said. Say what the fuck you said. Like, stand on that shit. Dinner outing is. <laughs> yeah what like is, what is this double speak ass <laughs> shit just say what you mean man this exactly i was just like this is so interesting but then i i i thought about what andrew tate said you need to quantify every <laughs> no nah, i did i did and it's one of, one of the few pieces of andrew tate andrew tate's useful information was you need to quantify every single minute every single second of your day and if that's going towards reaching your goal or not that's literally it like everything else then he started like bashing on on women or some shit like that. i don't know i stopped listening after that and mm. kevin samuel said something very similar but about money and it's like every time you go out somewhere you need or i think it's the other way around i think it was kevin samuels who said it about your time and uh andrew tate said it about your money was every time you go out you need to 
focus on where every single dollar is going and if that's going to benefit you or go go towards you being productive so i'm really I'm, i told this girl i was like yeah you know my um my id is not coming for four to six weeks four to six weeks yeah yeah, yeah yeah four to six weeks which is actually true which is dm that's how long the dmv takes it's like three to six weeks uh to receive it in the mail it's probably not going to take that long it's probably only going to take a few days but still like with the holiday and stuff like that and i put in the request over the weekend it's just not coming anytime soon so you know the fact that i'm like okay i have like this one person that wants to hang out with me cool you know whatever i'm somewhat interested but also not really because like i might have a career getting ready to pop off you know what i'm saying like Mm. It's, it's my time you know what i'm saying the the podcast is is going to be pumping and jumping we're going to have clips going out which i'm very excited about so yeah man you know i feel like i just ranted through like four different topics <laughs> and we haven't talked about a single thing that was scheduled for today's podcast so do we ever do anything that's scheduled nah it's usually just me talking for 20 minutes and you going yeah 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 for sure well, what do you want me to, want me to, want me to say, yeah man i know everything about voice acting here let me just give you my experience nah guys. nah nah nah, nah, nah. i'm just i'm just fucking with you man i'm just fucking with you nah, nah. Yeah. um but i will I create a clip yeah <laughs> uh i will say i'm very excited to you know be a part of some type of video game soon uh i'm looking forward to that i am trying like higher octaves and lower octaves of you know being able to, to toss my voice and make them sound different and stuff like that so i'm very very excited to really really jump into that and i hope i get some type of like anime gig because to be able to work along could you imagine working with one of your favorite voice actors ever who has voiced some of your most iconic characters of all time you know what i'm saying fucking spike spiegel <laughs> fucking mugen you know what i'm saying like yeah it's crazy bro it's crazy and even to have conversations with this man it's just like i i often have moments of just like this guy practically like you know he made such an impact on my fucking childhood like i can't believe i'm actually talking to this guy you know what i'm saying like it's mm. so surreal at moments like i i just I'm like, damn, like, how did I, how did I get here? <laughs> how did I get here? You know what I'm saying? So, you know, what's funny. Hmm. It's uh, a super, not a super long, uh, a decent amount of time ago. There was like, you remember when the YouTubers got into the, the voice acting game? There were some mm -hmm. YouTubers that got into an anime. Uh, I forgot what it was called, but it was like. One of them was husband. Ruby, for sure. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. A bunch of, uh, yeah, a bunch actually. Uh, because when, uh. Kagi, Kagi, and like three other, oh, yeah, three yeah. other guys. Yeah, yeah. They started off on on Ruby and like a couple other YouTube based projects. So, yeah, Kag Kagi's a good uh, a good voice actor though. He's in Genshin right now too. Yeah, shout He's out to a, Kagi, man. Uh, yeah, sh big shout outs to him. Yeah, I'm talking. About Valkyrie got into uh, another anime. Mm -hmm. Corpse husband and I think some others. Oh yeah, but, I remember. Uh, I remember Corpse. Yeah, I remember Corpse getting some stuff. So. I forgot the anime, but it was, it was, uh, it was interesting. Mm. I think that's a, a interesting way to promote a, a anime now. Mm. You know, I mean, I, I've seen a lot of shit go through like, uh, like Crunchyrolls was doing sponsorships with streamers to do uh, voiceovers and stuff. Yeah, and, uh, well, not voiceovers, voiceovers, but um, like watch togethers, I guess. I don't mm. know, watch parties. Mm -hmm. You can do watch parties for anime. They did that for Chainsaw Man. Oh shit! Uh, a few streamers got that. Wow. Let's watch the first episode. I had no idea. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. Hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna. What about you, uh, Jay? You getting in there? You um, do that? you know you what? I parties? I'm actually no, nah, not watch parties because only because I'm not on Twitch anymore. Like I I completely completely I ran out all of my subs on Twitch. Um, I just needed to like you know wait until all of them kind of burned out. Um, and now I'm like full time doing YouTube streaming. So we're doing that every single day for. At least an hour or two when i get off of work so in between like five to seven o'clock um if yep. not then i'll probably just like move it to the morning but yeah i'm trying to stream monday through friday on on youtube man that's that's my spot uh because when i run ads there i actually get paid so um Ooh, there you go <laughs> yeah i mean you know i'm not i'm not gonna pretend like i'm not a youtuber who gets money i mean you know what i mean like it's not i get a yeah, i get a little bit i get you know a little you know what i'm saying more than 
so more than fucking twitch yeah yeah way more than paying twitch. out at 100 and yeah i mean unless it's lee boy directly paying me through twitch or like one of my other like major major subs like i don't i, I don't twitch really doesn't like give me anything um at least with yeah. like youtube i get um outside of like super chats and donos and stuff like that like i get ad time and the ad time actually does rack up because just from the two hour stream no the three hours and 17 minutes stream the other day and i think i only ran like three ads three or four ads um the average watch time was about an hour for 15 Ooh. people so that's good that was great like i'm not gonna say it was crazy money but for a youtuber of my size to be making almost a hundred dollars for a stream with no donations on it that's one stream that was one stream yeah one stream five or six ads at 15 people almost a hundred bucks so it's like okay this might this might be something you know what i mean like if i did that on a regular basis a couple hundred dollars turn into a couple thousand dollars um a couple thousand dollars turns into my rent and electricity are paid and i no longer have to work my day job uh and that's before even reaching ten thousand. and that's just from having a dedicated audience of 15 people who want to sit and yeah we'll sit and watch the ads like no problem we'll click through the ads it's five seconds who cares like could you imagine if i had like 50 60 people in the stream like significantly more people and so now that uh that is an option i could definitely be a very big selling point for an anime one of uh my uh, i guess i would say i yeah i definitely look up to him is Zeno robinson um who has quickly emerged on the scene uh as far as voice acting and stuff for those of you guys who don't know he's hawks in my hero academia um, and he's dope, man. He's he's an absolute dope guy. I would love to have more than just one uh, Twitter space conversation with him. That would be really, really dope. But I mean, you know, man, I'm, I'm entering a, a conversation where I get to perform with Spike Spiegel, Zabuza, uh, Orochimaru, fucking, you know, the one of the greatest voice actors of all time. Nolan North is next. Like he's going to be on this upcoming week's live stream so i actually get to sit and have a conversation with my fucking icon bro like <laughs> uh, yeah i'm hoping i'm hoping he gets uh troy baker on there one day man that'll be that'll be dope uh he's been on before and i've watched the vod for that so steve gives us like all of his like playbacks from previous stuff but you know i want to see i want to have a conversation with tara strong um fuck man there's just so many people like <laughs> mm. just just to be like hey do you think uh, not even for like validation just to like have a conversation and thank them for their for what they've done i'm sure they've heard it millions of times every time they go to cons or every time they're on the street and somebody recognizes who they are but like i need these people to know like listen you are actually one of the main reasons and i i wish i could tell kevin conroy this but like you are actually the main reason why I'm like entering the voice acting space in the in the first place like you know what I mean so and uh yeah. I, I go from doing you know little hee hee ha ha's here on YouTube and who knows what the fuck else so yeah I'd, I'd absolutely be down if somebody came to me with like an anime project or something like that um yeah like a, a team four star I've I, I auditioned when they were doing the cell games um Ooh. I auditioned for them when they were doing um the boo saga because I wanted to do super boo uh so i auditioned for super boo and bobbity and then like also like background characters and stuff like that and they they never they never emailed me back so you know it's like whatever yeah, i mean you know they ended up getting you know axed anyway so it is what it is so Yeesh. yeah now i don't i'm not familiar with any maybe somebody in the can tell us in the comments but i'm not familiar with any more abridged series like people don't really do that uh anymore i feel like it takes a lot of work it takes a lot of work just to make a youtube video uh, like a youtube sketch of like 30 seconds for that you know what i mean like yeah it takes a long time just to produce those so producing an entire show of lip flaps and you know like voice actors and trying to organize all that it's just like shit is difficult so yeah 100 percent. Yeah, yeah i'd be down i mean uh, one thing I do want to do, and I, I'm just going to put this out there, is I want to be, I want to be in some type of DC-based project. Um, I would love to do mm. something involving the Justice League. I would love to do something involving the Legion of Doom that's coming out. Um, there is a new Bleach game 
uh, that's being made. Um, so I actually got really? to. I didn't know about yeah, that. yeah, yeah. I actually got to play test it not too long ago, which I think I can I legally know. talk about that. I just can't like talk about what's in the game. I mean, it's it's going to be based on the Thousand Year Blood War, and it's a it's not only a mobile but it's a console based game. Um, Interesting. Yeah, 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 and they ha they have a majority of the English class uh, like cast lined up, but obviously there are new characters that they need voices for. And so I kind of threw my hat in to, you know, one of the guys who was doing the survey and he was like, yeah, shoot us your email. And I was like, all right, bet. Wow. Cool. Oh, congratulations. That's a big project. Well, really. first of all, it, it's nothing's happened yet. Nothing, nothing's well, happened yet. So, you know, it is. a. am just saying in general, it is a big project, you know? Yeah. Th and thank if you. If you got in, that'd be great. Yeah. I mean, I assume it would be a one to one because, you know, now that the English dub is being made for the thousand year blood war because i haven't gotten a phone call or an email i assume whatever characters that they have casted for the the english dub are going to be in the video game as well so they've probably already picked those people for the english dub they probably just haven't made it yet so yeah uh safe to say i wasn't picked so i mean it is what it is whatever um you know hey man there's there's tons of projects coming out every single day i was playing um uh cyberpunk the other day and i was just like damn like you know, like when you run into some of these characters and they don't speak and it's just text bubbles. Yeah. And you just stuck there reading. I was like, man, this would, this would be a this is a part right here for you, boy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could just just random hop up. Random pedestrian. Yeah, random pedestrian 75. Like, I could just, you know, hop up in the mix. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm pretty cheap. Sure. Why not? So <laughs> I'm pretty cheap. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. When it comes to voice acting, I'm a cheap whore for sure. For sure so mm, yeah, yeah, yeah easy if you will yeah and then now one of the bigger projects i'm actually very very excited for and this is this is i'm gonna put this into the universe right now so you know if, if you any of you guys are religious non-religious believe in you know the energies of the universe right now i need you guys to put your hands together right with me and just you know pray with me um now that avatar studios is starting to really really pick up there is a Korra sequel that uh actually got you know, it, I, I don't want to say it's green lit, but from the audition websites that I am on, it they are looking specifically for someone who is familiar with the Legend of Korra franchise. And they, they specifically say the Legend of Korra, not Avatar The Last Airbender. So mm. I'm just saying, if I get to voice a villain alongside the return of Amon, I mean. That would be that would be really fucking cool <laughs> so yeah, you know what i'm saying like uh i would love to be a part of the avatar franchise that would be i think that's something next to like being in something in the dc universe i think that is like my number two goal for like ever so <laughs> so we'll see how that goes man i'm, I'm very excited okay. this actually feels like i i have a a life in front of me and the only thing i really have to do is sit in front of a fucking microphone Hey man, so you gotta get to it. Yeah, get I'm actually it, I'm actually thinking about hitting up Steve's agent because like I have I have his name, well two two of his agents. Um, one of them, he's kind of kind of ducking, but I mean you know we'll see we'll see you know I don't wanna I don't wanna speak nothing out there like too soon, but you know we'll see we'll see. So because my last right. agent she was with uh, this company called Coast to Coast. And so she no longer, since she no longer works for them, like, um, and then we stopped, my contract end, ended January, 2020. So right before the real, like the hardcore start of the pandemic. So it was like, there was no, there was no work going out anyway. My contract ended, there was no reason to re-up. Like, she's like, okay. And since she's no longer at the company, it's like, I now have to reestablish a, uh, an introduction and a friendship to the person who's now in her p old position. So mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, which is kind of tough. Cause I've never done that. Like I, I'm gonna be honest with like, when I met this woman, um, her name is Portia, right? When I met her, it's because I was dating OG at the time and her and OG are very, very close. Cause you know, she's a family friend of like on her mother's side, I think either her mother's side or her father's side. I don't, I don't fucking know. And so she already knew she was, you know, she already knew of her. And so when she made the introduction, she was like, oh, I, I, I like his voice. I like the way he speaks, blah, 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 blah. You should have him come in for a meeting. And it was just like, oh, shit. And then so after she and I broke up, I was like, fuck it. I'm going to jump in here. I'm going to hop in the mix. 
And so she was like, oh my God, it's so good to see you. I haven't seen you in years and blah, 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 blah. And I was like, yeah, actually I have this, these projects that I've worked on, not even a full reel, right? I just showed her a couple of YouTube videos I had and then two credits that I had, right? For one for a fucking Colgate commercial that never aired. And then the other one was for background voices in Lego Batman three. And she was like, I can put you to work. Absolutely. Ooh. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and I didn't know she was going to leave that position, but I mean, you know, <laughs> shit happens. Yeah, shit happens. So, but yeah, man, I'm very, 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 very excited about the future. And then that's just, that's just voice acting. That's not even like an actual, because I'm working on the advertising agency and I'm trying to work that out and trying to feel what that space is going to be like. I haven't even broken into that industry yet. Like now that I'm editing more, uh, I still hate it, of course. Uh, yep. I'm really just like diving in that motherfucker. So, you know, I almost don't even have time for YouTube videos, but I'm trying to carve out and find the time for it. So, you know, it's very interesting being an adult and making adult decisions and adult moves and stuff like that. So, you know, but, uh, oh, there you go. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. It feels very interesting. Cause the more podcasts I listen to, like, I mean, I talked about this on last week's show, the, the fact that there are some people who really just get paid to come up with ideas you know what i mean like and i feel like at a certain point that could definitely be me because i'm trying to go from youtuber to producer you know to commentator and all this other stuff like i'm not i don't need to be the one on camera you know what i'm saying like i could just you know come up with like great ideas for other people to do and i'm just there to have it filmed edited and then put out and distributed. You know what I mean? Like that part is easy. It's actually trying, the hardest part is trying to schedule, trying to actually be on the damn show, like, or be whatever mm. the show is about. You know what I mean? So, but anyway, that's that. Yeah. So podcaster on a mission, man. Podcaster on a mission. That's all I'm saying. So, um, we up 2022 yeah, or sir. 2023. We up. Yeah. So speaking of, I know this is probably like, you know, Jay, go ahead and throw this out the window. Like, we don't need to talk about this, but uh, how's the uh, progress on you possibly coming back to stream? What's that looking like? Or it's the exact uh, same place? It's, it's, well, it's not the exact same place. It's just what I'm trying to do is it requires a decent amount of time, right? Mm -hmm. So I've kind of, uh, between like editing podcasts, episodes and shit congratulations by the way i'm very proud of you thank you thank you so much thank you so much i actually worked pretty hard on the last one bro i noticed i noticed <laughs> you watched you watched the last one yeah of course i did man i was in it well that's true yeah uh, I, I watch yeah. them all i watch them all i watch them all down. Oh, okay yeah i've been working on like it's it's a slow start because there's a few things I still need to catch up on in terms of like editing podcasts. Mm -hmm. So as soon as I, that, I finish that, I'm going to really put my head to the grindstone on that one. Uh, I'm still looking for shit to do because I don't want to be one of those guys who, who just like sits there, plays a game for like an hour or two. And then, well, now it's time to react to videos, guys. Let's react to videos. Ha ha. Right. Like I, I do want to play games and shit. So but I also don't want to react and do that shit. Right. I mean, you know, you can just make that a one-time week limited. thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, or have, limit that. Have you ever considered uh, streaming you actually producing and editing content? Have you thought about doing that? Uh, I don't make enough content to do that. You want to? Uh, no. Okay. All right. Well, not, not that much. I figured. I worked. Yeah. Yeah, I I understand. Or at least like you want to work a little hard. I do have to work a little harder. Though. I mean, you know, I think for you it's 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 you know whatever you're feeling that day, because uh, you could always talk about like, hey, these are projects that you know me and Jay or me and this other person are, are working on right now. Um, you know, that could be something. Or you don't necessarily need to react to certain things. What you can also do is watch something and then come up with ideas to try and make that video that you just watched better like just probably just pick random videos on youtube and be like how would i plank on make this video better you know like how mm. would i how would i change the production how would i change this you know 
how would I make this look differently? How would I make this sound differently or anything like that? Not to like improve it necessarily or improve somebody's content, but just give it a different perspective of how you would have shot and made a video or something like that. It could be a gaming video. It could be a Mr. Beast video. Shit, Gary V has tons of content that like I, I would have like done a completely different way. He's got like his big five video or whatever, where it's like his five like most iconic like favorite things that he like tries to pay attention to at, at all times like every single day and none of them are his family which is funny um <laughs> he never he doesn't say like not one time is is something family probably because it's already implied that that's like his number one thing it's like that's why his family is so secretive like he doesn't put his wife on social he doesn't put his kids on social or anything like that um but it also seems like this guy is working 27 hours a day, so I don't know how he has time for his family. But, I mean, you could always do something like that instead of reacting. It's just like, how can I make this piece of content better, you know? Maybe just do um, do that one time a week. Maybe uh, listening to podcast, you know, that's more of a reaction thing. And then an actual reaction on a third time a week. You know, that'd be cool. I would actually tune in for that. Mm. So, you know, it's just an idea, you know. Yeah. I, I think that's true. And because there's for me, infinite uh, content, sorry. you know, you'd be good. No, no, no. Go ahead. Go ahead. My bad. No, it's a... It, my thing is, is whenever I want to make a, a project or whatever, mm -hmm. like, I'm... I, I want to do it... I Like, I, I need to be inspired. Like, uh, as weird as that sound. Like, I need to be inspired. I need to be in there. I don't want to just make it to, to make it. If I want to do something on my own, like, mm -hmm. I want to express something in the in whatever i'm doing mm, so i see I, I i need to be inspired to do that and i'm not always super fucking inspired and if i wait enough sometimes if i, I wait long enough i'll i'll get really inspired to do something mm -hmm. that's my my thing interesting okay but i feel that yeah. i wonder if there's a way you could um i don't want to say force that but you know it could I be. Love, I love to. I love to be in fucking 100 percent art. Uh, what is it? Inspired mode all the time. That'd be cool. <laughs> you know what? Uh, it's funny because I. I feel like I've achieved that. I feel like I'm finally at that place, and you know, uh, I, I think I'm in this mode 90 percent, if not 95 percent of the time, because you know I was listening to Flagrant this last week. And that gives that anytime I, I listen to like podcasts that are clearly way superior, you know, uh, which, by the mm -hmm. way, guys, please rate this podcast five stars if you guys are enjoying it. Um, anytime I listen to podcasts that are vastly superior to us, I'm like, how is it that this this podcast is successful? You know what I mean? And like listening to their conversation, like their their chemistry or is it the topics? Is it the fact that they're on camera, not on camera, uh, stuff like that? Like I usually try to rip apart these podcasts and I'm like, damn, like and, and in that process of me listening to a show, uh, I suddenly become inspired. And then sometimes it's it's a little fucked up because that other five percent of the time I'm usually collapsed and laid in laying in bed or something like that. And then the 90 to 95 percent of time where i'm like overly inspired to do something it's actually fucking up a relationship i have or or a friendship or some other thing i need to be doing because i need to be focused elsewhere because i'm too busy thinking about like if i'm doing my my work for my day job right and i'll suddenly get an idea of like damn this would be a good tiktok or this would be a good video this would be good for the podcast this would be good for this and then next thing yeah. you know, two hours goes by because I'm sitting there thinking about this project or writing it down and then I lose track of time. And yes, it's productive to me personally, but it's, I lose, I lose out on two hours of work time. You know what I mean? So, yeah, but you know, you'll, you'll find your stride eventually. I think the more you consume content that you actually like or content that you would, or even content that you don't like or content that you want to fuck with, I really think you'll, you'll, you'll figure it out. You'll find your your mm. uh, you'll you'll find your zone i'll say because you're yep. you're getting to it now i mean the more we take the podcast seriously and the more like every single week you come with more stuff even like when we get off the podcast and we have like ideas about like you know hey let's let's edit you know clips this way or let's edit clips that way like even our conversation from last week um you know after our break it was just like damn like oh yeah yeah we can put the clips here and we can work on that and then you know get more people coming to the patreon and stuff like that man man i was just like oh okay all right so yeah you know 
you'll, you'll find your zone. You got it. You're you're doing significantly way more, you know, in the past couple of weeks than we have, you know, in the previous what forty some odd weeks since we started the podcast. So yeah, yeah. So I Here's just I just like doing more. I guess. I mean, I'm I now that we we've like done the basics and stuff like gotten into got me into doing more edits and shit like i just i feel more confident about doing shit like that last one it took a long time but i got in the studio which i'm just gonna call look at this motherfucker calling it the studio studio. look at this look (laughs) i got in the stew (laughs) and i I was just like i was just pumping those edits out i was like you know what bang 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 Let's go. I was just doing that shit. Let's go. I'm proud of that. It just felt right. I love I love hearing it, man. I love hearing it, bro. So and then even even when I hit you up, I was like, hey, you know, could you have the the audio for me? You were like, all right, bet. I got it. Which shit. I might as well have had even busy that day. Yeah, exactly. I was just like, damn, like he really knocked that shit out. That shit took like 10 minutes. I was like, what the fuck? Like, I wasn't expecting that shit for like a week. Like, I'm not even gonna lie to you. I was like, yeah, by the time Plank uploads this or gets around to uploading it, it'll be next week and then I can put some clips out for it. But that shit was same day. I was like, oh, okay. I think that shit took me like 30 minutes. It took me, not 30 minutes. It was like an hour, hour or two. Mm Mm-hmm. And then after that, I had to go play Overwatch. So, oh yeah, yeah motherfuckers sure. were stressing me out to try to to finish this shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So let me ask you a question. Since since you're saying that, you feel like, you know, you have to have your your time planned out effectively. You know, motherfuckers are asking you to hop on the game because you they need you to carry them to victory. You know, you yeah, yeah, be of like, course. Oh, but let me go do this other thing though. Well, I think that day specifically, I was like my rationale for doing it so quickly was well the, we talked about thanksgiving and this shit's got to get done and because you couldn't do it i was like well i'm just gonna do it fuck it right uh i had all the i had the recording i uploaded you the audio i was like well i, I gotta do this first this is more important this is the main show right like the other patreon shit i can i can throw up whenever we need one right uh so that, that was just kind of the rationale if if like if this shit came out next week and we talking about some shit about fucking thanksgiving it's like dog it's already christmas yeah yeah <laughs> we're already talking about ho ho hoes you know what i mean like yeah exactly okay yeah that shit not working that shit not working yeah. so how did how did how did you feel about that though now that you you were like oh shit i gotta take priority for this i think the worst part was doing getting gameplay because i just i run out of gameplay so quick you in this gameplay bro what is <laughs> i'm telling what you what's going on no you need to just oh, hire pm just... To, to get gameplay man I, I probably should do that. Yeah, yeah. Just commission him. Just for asking for game yeah, tell tell him, hey, look, here's here's the mega link. Just when you're done playing a game, upload the upload the gameplay footage. That would save us that would save us a bunch of time. Because then we could at least put honestly, now that I think about it, I might DM him about that because <laughs> because that would save yeah, us so much that. time. Yeah, yeah, please. You're the producer. You you gotta handle that. That would save us so yeah. much time uh when it comes to like actually getting gameplay and stuff. Just have him upload it to a spe- I mean, you have editor and owner privileges. Make a folder specifically for him. Ask him, hey, you know, we'll give you credit in this video, you know, and we just need gameplay in the background. We'll even give you credit on the on the TikTok and the IG reels and stuff. Sure, fuck it, why not? All right. We'll put his Twitch up on there. That's too much credit. I'm going to just give the gameplay myself. <laughs> no, I mean, it, it, at a certain point, you have to automate it. You know what I mean? Like, slow it. Like, it's taking too long. You know what I mean? Like He works too much for me to ask him to do that. Yeah, but, I mean, if he's uploading, like, one hour of content per week, you know what I mean? And he's playing the game in the Discord anyway. So, you know, it could be Val content. It could be Call of Duty. It could be whatever. I mean, he's always playing at least one game for at least one hour per week. Like, we can guarantee that he pay, he does that at least. Because so I'd be seeing this motherfucker in there for 10, 13 hours, man. You know you know what I mean? Like, no hey, so I just, I'd just be skimming through because I'll go through in our group chat and I'll put like, oh, Plank, I found an, another article and I'll go and I'll look. Oh, you mo- there's 15 motherfuckers in DJ server right now. I know somebody got to have some gameplay. <laughs> mm, okay. So I'd be seeing like three different people with the fucking live thing on. I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody, somebody need to be recording me some gameplay right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I can't, I can't uh, record if I'm streaming the game. Yeah, so that's gonna, that's, that's also fun. Exactly, but he can't ask me for Overwatch streams and shit. Exactly, but he can. He got two PCs. That man can make it work. Get that man a little Ooh. credit on the YouTube video. You know what I'm saying? Gameplay by PM. Boom, done. <clears throat> that's it. We get. We about to start uh, 
I'm gonna give him like two bucks, pennies on the dollar. And nah, That's don't uh, start off with with charity numbers. This is charity funny. numbers first, then be like, oh okay. Capital. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. You want to talk talk up, not talk down, because trying to trying to talk down is like, yeah, be like, hey man, how much y'all making on this podcast? Listen, don't worry about all that. <laughs> Not enough, yeah, yeah. not enough for you to care. Yeah, not enough for you to care. It'd be like, oh, let me get some equity. Ah, uh, now we having a completely different conversation. Like, <laughs> equity, <laughs> equity. Damn, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna launch this game real quick. Yeah, 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 exactly, man. So, cause I'm I launch up Devil May Cry. I just bought this shit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was just about to ask. I need some newer gameplay, man. You know, I was about to say like, oh, maybe we can get PM to get us some God of War Ragnarok gameplay for this week. That'd be cool. Cause I'm not buying that game anytime soon. I just bought Far Cry Six. I just bought it. And I didn't even know there was a Stranger Things collaboration. Like, where you're fighting yeah. demigorgons and shit, and it's got the Stranger Things music. Bro, I had no idea. Ubisoft has done a terrible job marketing that, because apparently this shit came out eight months ago. I didn't hear a thing about it. Yeah, man. The Stranger Things update was eight months ago, and I'm just now noticing it. I'm just now hearing about it. So, I... <laughs> I'm just like, what the fuck are they doing over at this company, man? I had no idea. That could be some Watch Dogs Halloween content, and I wouldn't even fucking know. So, but anyway. Jesus Christ. Yeah, he's, these guys are doing weird shit, man. I, I don't know. I don't see them on the Twitter feed. I don't he's see them on Instagram. Yeah. They're, these companies suck dick. Yeah, they, they lacking something in the marketing, man. So they need to they need to hire, uh, what's what's uh, Sama Sama uh, Promotions. That's who they need to hire. Sama Promotions. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, 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 that was that was the name. At first, I had it like um, I had it my last name because I wanted to bring my dad in on the, on the business. But you know, after that New York trip, I, I got to cut family members out of the out of the family business. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. So don't do business with family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can never, can never. I mean, unless it's like from the ground, like starting at the beginning, and there's like success at the beginning. But I cannot. I can't and do a startup then, with my dad. Like, absolutely not. No. I Because when I got my third client, and it was a music client, my dad was like, oh, do they need promotion or something like that? I'm like, oh, who the fuck telling you about my fucking business, bro? Like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, get the fuck out of here, dude. So, you know. But my mom even texted me on Thanksgiving. She was like, make sure to text your dad happy Thanksgiving. I was like, nah, I'm good. Damn. <laughs> well, yeah. Nah, I'm good is crazy. Nah, I'm good. Yeah. I don't. He called me like the day after and I was just like, what's up? What you need? And he's like, do I have any, did, did any mail come by? I was like, no, I'll let you know if mail comes by. Yeah, just click. Damn. That's it. And Rocky. Bro, I had, listen, I need to, I need to start flexing. I think this last two years, really, I need to start flexing the fact that I can say no to people. Honestly, not being able to say no to people because I'm just so concerned about people leaving my life and never coming back. I mean, first of all, anybody that has left my life has never fucking come back anyway. So fuck them. I'm telling, if I want to say no to some shit, oh, do you want to go here? Do you want to hang out? Do you want to go to dinner? You want to go to this? No, I'm saying no. I'm like, if I genuinely don't want to do something, I'm saying no, fuck no. Get out of here. So, and mm. my parents are included. Family members are included. Sorry, I need my own personal fucking peace. So, if I'm going to be successful in the shit that I'm doing, I need to be able to say no to people. Uh, shit. Matter of fact, I've been doing it all summer. PM been asking, Jay, when are we going to play the lunch lady game? You know how excited I am to play this fucking lunch lady game? I just tell him every week. I don't even tell him. I just don't show up. I be like, yeah, PM, I'm going to show up on Friday, man. I got about two, three hours. I don't show up. I got shit I got to do. Damn. I got worried, literally like last week, like last Friday, I had, not not last Friday, but Friday before, uh, before Thanksgiving, I, I was doing this, the the audition for Steve. So there was no, there was no fucking way. And then I ended up having to redo it all weekend. So no, absolutely not. I'm saying no to people. Uh, that's, that's my, that's my word of 2023. No and fuck no. Okay. So, you know. Fuck your shit. Yeah, yeah. I need to get some shit done, man. I'm seeing people pass me up in like, Doing shit with their lives? Absolutely not. I'm cool. I'm cool. Mm, so, okay. Yeah. But you're gonna get in your bag, okay? Fuck yeah, yeah. man. I need a bag for like I, I, I'm sitting here with a plastic bag with holes in it, bro. Wondering like why people yeah. are just like, why don't nobody fuck with me? Like, <laughs> not the plastic bag. Not the yeah. whole Walmart. Nah, bag. man. Not even a Walmart bag, bro. Uh, Walmart bags at least got a little quality to it. I got the little black dollar store ones. Oh. Yeah, the ones with no handles. Mm. And you got to hold it oh. in a weird way. Yeah, that's what I got, bro. That's what I oh got. And the bottom of the bag is wet. Ugh. Yeah. Oh my God. From the residual oh. bullshit that these bitches be leaving. Anyway, um, oh my God. you know what, man? This has been a great episode. That's so personal. Man. It was. It was. It was definitely a personal attack. But hey, if it doesn't apply, let it fly. You know what I'd be saying. Mm, okay. So, yeah. So, um, but anyway, man, we didn't get to no gaming conversations today. 
Gaming will be next week. We'll Gaming will Gaming definitely be next, next week. I especially want to talk about this girl's post on Twitter, uh, Melanie, uh, Melanie Mac. Oh, uh, not that one. Yeah, 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 I got to, bro. I, I, I was one. researching her, and it, she has to be, she has to be joking for sure. Um, for those of you who don't know, there's this girl on Twitter. Her name is, uh, her Twitter handle is at Melanie Mac, and she seems super, super funny, right? Um, she was commenting on this tweet. This will be the only thing that we talk about gaming related this week. Um, somebody posted up a tweet and it was like a Patrick meme and it, it, in quotations, it says, uh, it's Patrick sleeping and it says our games are 80 to hundred hours long snore. Right. And then it's got him with like extra hyper active eyes. Our games are 20 hours long. And it's like, Ooh, I'm interested in that. And, um, one guy who quote tweeted it, he said, I swear the older I get, the shorter games become. And that's a much better selling point than the longer ones. So she goes on here and this is how I know she's an absolute troll just for views. Um, she has to be, she has to know that, hey, you know what? I'm a mildly attractive woman. I could just say some spicy shit and people will either agree with it or they won't, but they'll, they're gonna talk about it. They're gonna talk crazy about it, right? 25,000 likes on this tweet, 974 quote tweets. Bro, they are shredding her in these quote tweets. Like some of the stuff, like there are people basically doxing this bitch. Like they were talking oh about like the, the state that she lives in. She must not be paying attention to her Twitter because holy shit, these people are, are going, these people are going in on her. So anyway, she quote tweeted it and said, so many quote unquote gamers nowadays don't even like video games. When I saw that, I was like, hmm, I wonder what she means by that. I'm not fucking with gaming lately. I could see, I could see how I, you know, somebody would think that. They just want to quickly play through a story and be done with it and on to the next. Now, that's when I was a little confused because I was like, is that not the point of playing a single player game to get through the story, enjoy what you enjoy about it, and then move on to the next one? I mean, that's what I'd be doing. I, yeah, I'd be doing the same shit. Yeah, I'd be, I'd, it's called playing a video game. You should game. also say in here the shit in the, in the post, in the original post. Mm-hmm. She's eating the sticker butter, man. Okay, I was, I didn't get to that yet. I didn't get to that yet. But that was when I was doing my research on her because I needed to see who she was. I was like, does this woman have any merit? This is a lot of likes. This is a lot of retweets. This is a lot of quote tweets, right? So I, I instantly had to pull it up. So her second tweet, you know, follow up her first one. She said, and it's the crowd that AAA developers cater to. Uh, they cater their games to these type of people these days. This is why the only thing I care to play anymore are either Japanese made or retro games. I am so beyond tired of these glorified walking simulators with cutscenes every five seconds. Now, she doubled down on the on the every five seconds cutscenes part. I wonder what game she's referencing because I can't think of a game that had that many significant cutscenes that it was intruding on, on my game. But, you know, and then she quote tweeted somebody that said, one of my pet peeves is when a person says a game is good when they actually mean the game's story is good. To which she responded, she said, many games that get on the game of the year nominee, nominee list usually are, but not like there's much more to them uh, than, not that there's many more to choose from since there's only, you know, a limited amount basically. Um, to which she responds in the comments multiple times about, you know, cutscenes being every five seconds. Somebody mentions Portal and how short that game is. And she actually says, Portal actually has good gameplay substance and didn't spam you with cutscenes every five seconds. Portal came out in 2009. Like, yep. it was an early 2000s game. And the way that I know she, she didn't really fuck with Portal like that is because she mentions it in the red box. The, I'm sorry, not the red box, the orange box, which if you guys didn't know, the orange box is Team Fortress, Portal, and what was the other one? What's the Half -Life? third? Half-Life. And Half-Life. So all of those games came out independent of each other. So you really, if you didn't buy them when they came out, you bought them in the orange box. This bitch is late yeah. to the game. I, I was just, so by this, by me doing my research, I was just real confused. I had to go and I look. She's a partner Twitch streamer gamer nerd culture content creator quote unquote type on type you know what i'm saying like of course okay. unfortunately she does not have an only fans i checked i looked oh my God. um you know Why I, is that <laughs> what i had to do my due diligence i i had to okay. i had to see it through i had to make sure my boys were gonna have something to watch you know what i'm saying so go. you know there was a couple oh of times God. where i went back and i looked at some of her old streams right i did 
I did. Okay. I really did. Just chatting. She knows what she's doing, bro. She's an absolute troll. Absolute troll. When she's on stream, she purposely says the most aggravating shit ever. Um, she's one of those girls that is absolutely way smarter than the internet gives her credit for, for sure. Like she is definitely playing people like a fiddle. And I don't think she, I, I think she does feel this way about these games. But my only counterpoint to all of this, and this is me wrapping it up. Okay. I understand, sweetie, Melanie, homie girl. I understand you want to play these games that have these terrific stories and are extremely long and you can enjoy them for many a time. But I don't think you are the person to be able to tell me how to experience a video game. Um, you are a full-time content creator, or at least you d seem that way. Um, and if I only have 20 hours available to play a game, like I'm not gonna play Assassin's Creed Valhalla that is completely bloated with nothing to do in the game. You're running around doing almost nothing. The story is not interesting enough to keep you in that game. Like, I, I really need you to understand that not every game, just because it's long, is good. That's what, I mean, <laughs> just like Dick Size. That's why you haven't played Persona. Huh? That's why you haven't played Persona. Right? Whoa, there's, there's several things being thrown out right now, sir. Oh, oh, let I'm me sorry. let me cut. <laughs> Shut the oh, fuck up. <laughs> first of all, Persona, just the first 10 hours were difficult for me to get through. OK, shut the fuck oh, they up. Are. Yeah, they, they are. Speed all right. Joint. Yeah, it, literally every person I have ever told, hey, I went through the first 10 hours and I was bored. Agreed with me. Every 10 out of 10 people that I talked to told me that, yeah, the first 10 hours of the game are a little difficult to go through. Hour 11, it turns up. I would say the same thing for anybody. playing. I mean, I played Disgaea a turn-based JRPG anime sprite RTS game. Do you really think I don't have the patience to play Persona? Absolutely not. The first 10 hours, that is a long time. That's the first 35 episodes of One Piece. At least I didn't say I'd rather watch One Piece. So, let, I think- you, know, you got me. Yeah, I think I deserve some, some credit there, just a little bit. But anyway, to go back to what I was saying about her, sweetie, baby girl, just because it's long doesn't mean it's good, all right? And sometimes just because it's good, it doesn't have to be long. Amen to my short to my short dick kings out there. So that's all I gotta say, man. Yeah, shout out to shout out to my boys. I don't belong in that group, <laughs> but you know, this bullshit again, yes, sir. man. Yes, sir. BBC gang, mm -mm. Okay. let's go. Hop on. Um, okay. But anyway, yeah, what yeah, the yeah. Fuck? So. <laughs> That's all I gotta say for this week, man. Hey, I'm, man. I'm gonna, I knew yeah. this woman was trolling the second she pulled up in this video with and she, a stick this, butter and a crop top. She's eating a stick and butter. I knew it. Yeah, that shit was wild, bro. When I saw that, I said, why is this woman? And she's talking, funny enough, the context of the video that she's talking about in there, um, she's talking about how society is focusing too much on people's mental health. You know, we that's the real problem with society right now is all of these unhinged people running around. And I was like, is this bitch in the car eating a stick of butter? And I was just so confused. I was like, yo, she's she's a grade S tier troll for sure. This was fucking yeah. hilarious. This is one of the mm. funniest fucking things. I, I need to follow her on Twitter. So shout out to her. She's just actually funny. And shout like, out. yeah, shout out to her. So <laughs> that was great. I don't um, know who could stomach eating a stick of butter, but hey, man, good shit. Yeah, don't get me wrong, man. That's I, actually I, pretty impressive. Yeah, honestly. That shit would have made me throw up. She deserved, she deserved the likes and the follows that she gets for eating a stick of butter live on the internet, man. And then put it on mm. TikTok and got hundreds of thousands of views. You, you are a give bold, her an uh, Oscar for the acting. Honestly, yeah. you are a very bold individual. And, and quite frankly, you might as well be a super saiyan because holy shit, you bit into that mother. Irish you ever stomach. see somebody bite ice cream? Yeah. Yeah, she's one of those. Like, the fact that she's capable of doing that. Yeah, but butter. That shit is... Oh, I know her teeth hurting. <laughs> I know her teeth hurting. So... Yeah. But, uh... Ooh. Yeah, man, that's gonna be it for me this week. Uh, the one other thing I wanted to talk about, uh, Callisto Protocol comes out next week, man. Oof. Yes, be sir. good. Finally. You gonna stream that? Uh, oh, hell yeah, I'm gonna stream that. Finally, a good fucking video game? Thank God. I mean, there's mm. multiple good video games that came out this year, but still still you know True. i'm very excited about this one man um i Definitely think I, yeah i think i'm gonna go ahead and grab it for for ps5 instead of pc so uh, that's probably a good idea yeah it's probably easier to stream that way mm -hmm. so 
but uh mm. yeah man that's that's it for me this week i don't have any more announcements i pretty much ran out of things to say i, t- I talked about everything so what about you plank any anything no, coming I'm, up i mean i think that's i think we got to everything uh we possibly could mm. so, yeah we'll have some I'm good we'll have some gaming stuff throughout the week this week maybe we'll you know sit down to a do a little ticky tacky here and there you know mm. maybe a talky tick you know what i'm saying talking yeah, yeah of course yeah 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 so but uh that's hey, that's gonna be it for me this week man uh we want to thank you guys so much for listening if you were listening to the audio version of this podcast make sure to hit the subscribe or the follow button whichever one whichever respective platform that you're on make sure to give this uh five stars because we desperately desperately need the good reviews um if you're watching the video version make sure to hit the like button subscribe if this is your first time and you made it all the way here uh let us know down in the comments what your favorite part of the, this week's show was uh plank uh once again man it was it was amazing you know, working with you this week, bro. I I really appreciate you putting in all the hard work, man. Thank you. Same to you, man. Yeah, I don't I don't say it enough. I know I'm constantly telling you like, hey, can you do this? Hey, can you do that? But you know, I I really appreciate you, man. Hey, I appreciate you too, man. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get out of here, guys. This has been the Canon Culture Podcast. We will we'll see you guys next week. Make sure to keep it canon. <laughs>